Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Steve Knotts. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull out a kick drum from a crappy drum loop and turn it into something we can use. So here's the situation. I got a track from a friend and this is what I have for the kick drum channel. Now this might've been a mistake where they exported their stems and put other drums in with the kick drum. Um, so I wanna pull out the kick drum and only use that and get to here. There's the bass line. And just for reference, the other tracks they sent, here's the hi-hat, okay, with a little ride. That's usable. And there's the snare clap sound with reverb on it. That's usable. The mistake is this kick drum file. The original kick drum loop has all those other drums in there. So what I want to do is make a kick drum into a heavy low kick drum, blend it with the hi-hats and snares and rides, and make a drum beat that sounds like a full, crisp, high-end beat with low thump that doesn't sound like this kind of unfinished thing. Now, if this was a stereo drum track and I had to process this, I could EQ it, compress it, do whatever, make this work as the beat. But um, since I got the, the hi-hats and, and snares on a separate audio channel, I wanna um, take the kick drum out and just only have this be kick drum. Eventually, it's gonna sound like this. So we're gonna end up here, starting from here. So this is our before sound. It's an idea. This sounds like a sketch, sounds kind of like an amateur first draft or whatever. When we get to here, in the after version, this actually sounds like it could be the foundation for a track where we could lay in chords, melody, lead, vocal, other sounds, and have it be workable. So how did we get there? Uh, let's mute down all the other sounds and go into my universal channel strip. So first what I'm gonna do is show you what's in there. There's a limiter. Let's bypass that. <clears throat> There's an EQ. Bypass that. A compressor. Bypass that. Here's a gate. This is gonna be the place we really start. And notice that um, <clears throat> all the plugins in this rack are mapped to bypass so that I can uh, turn them on and off when I want to. <clears throat> bypass the high pass filter and the utility plugin. Bypass that. I'm gonna go through the process I used. So right now, the rack is doing nothing. The first thing I went to was the gate because I thought I just wanna chop out some of the sounds. And since I know the kick drum is coming through, I even set up a sidechain filter, an EQ filter on the gate to make it so that only the low frequencies are gonna trigger the gate to open. How did I know where to set those? Well, let's start by identifying what frequencies is the kick drum happening at. In other words, we want the gate only to open when a low frequency is coming through. Any high frequency stuff is not allowed to open the gate, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is ask the question, what frequency do I wanna open the gate? Let's play the loop. You can even turn off everything so there's no effects. Go to my master channel. I got a spectrum analyzer on there. And I can see the kick drum bump is big right here around 75 hertz. Put the mouse on the line, read the frequency in the little box in the lower left corner. And I can say, all right, if I have a 75 hertz filter, then when a, a frequency comes through at 75 hertz, it's gonna open the gate and that will allow the sound I want. So I go to my gate, turn that on, activate sidechain, activate EQ, set it to the bandpass mode. That's called peak if you're looking at it in push. Set the frequency to 75 hertz and then just play with the threshold. So now you can hear that the gate is only opening when the kick drum hits. After that, it's up to you to set the attack time and release and hold so it feels like it's grabbing the duration of the kick drum that you want. And that's basically working. So right away, we made a bunch of progress to have only the kick drum on track one instead of all those other sounds. That's where we started before. So that's only using a gate. I think gate is one of the most underused uh, audio engineering tools in electronic music because the more you cut out places in between a beat, the more space you get for other cool stuff. Next problem is that that kick drum sounds kind of had like it has like a ping and some weird other frequencies. So let's it sounds like it has not been EQ'd. So let's turn on the EQ and I'll just talk you through the bands of what I did. Um, probably the most important one is on band eight, just a low pass filter. 
because whatever's happening with the hi-hat, snares, reverb, and whatever, I don't want any of that in there. So I'm going to pull this down to about 300 hertz. Add a little low boost, a little bump. And I found a couple places that I wanted to um, EQ some frequencies out. I'm not going to go through those in detail, but there was some resonant kind of stuff in there. And honestly, the main thing I wanted to do was just this low pass filter to get the kick to feel more bumpy. So let's go before. No yummy. Now that's a lot better. We have a kick drum that's one sound instead of a whole drum loop. And it's a low frequency sound instead of having clacky high frequency stuff in there. So already when I put this together with the snare and the hi-hat ride thing, I got something a little bit bumpy that feels like it could be working in a track. But let's just see what else could we do if we were gonna treat this like, oh, it's a kick drum sound. Well, I'm not sure if that loop was stereo or not. So I'm gonna turn on my utility plugin and just activate the mono switch. It's kind of a no brainer. I just wanna make sure that kick drum that was coming through on track one is gonna be only mono. And notice that this rack, if you go to turn the utility gain down to minus zero, it bypasses. If I wanna activate the utility plugin without adding any gain, I just set that to zero. Plugin comes on, I can use the mono switch. I mapped all the macro knobs in there to do that to make it easy for me to use. High pass filter, do we need a high pass filter? Let's look at our master channel spectrum. If there's any sub frequency range crap in here, we might use that. Kick drum is big down to 60 something Hertz. There's a little bump in the thirties. I don't really think we need a high pass filter this, but if we did, I would put it in just to like 40 Hertz. And sometimes the main reason to use a high pass filter is just to add that resonant bump. So what if we go to about 65 or something, add a bunch of resonance. That's another way to kind of EQ the kick drum to get more thump on the bottom and also remove weird sub bass stuff that you don't want if it's infrasonic. <laughs> so let's not go too crazy with that. I just like to show off what's in this rack. And again, high pass filter, bypass the plugin, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So I like mapping knobs that, um, have multiple functions so you can easily bypass the plugin you don't want and then get your hands on it if you do. So a channel strip for me is all about grabbing the audio engineering tools you want, using them for the, the problem you wanna solve. And if you don't have that problem, don't solve it. Don't use that plugin. Uh, next up, compression. Why would we wanna use compression? Well, um, if this sound was not up at a loud enough level, we might wanna add some makeup gain or we might wanna dial in some compression for some kind of transient shaping and stuff. I'm not doing any side chaining on this one. And honestly, this sound does not need to be compressed a whole lot. Yeah, I'm not even going to, I'm going to leave that off because we don't need to compress this sound. And then finally for the limiter gain, if I really wanted to smash this up into the limiter, I could switch that on and do that. So maybe I'll just switch the limiter on so it's barely working. Let's add officially one dB of gain. Oh, even that's too much. Okay, and that is how quick it can be. The sound is basically as done as it's gonna get. I'm not trying to replace the kick drum. I'm not trying to make the most perfect kick drum in the world. I'm trying to get a quick, easy solution to work with the tracks that this person sent me. So basically I got audio stems for this beat. And the mistake was that in the kick drum, I received this audio file that had the kick mixed with the other drums. I wanted to use their kick drum, remove all the other stuff, do it quickly and efficiently with a set of audio engineering tools that are all in one place, mapped with the controls I want, so I don't have to hunt plugins, drop them in a rack, set the ranges, spend time tweaking them and dialing them in. Now, I could do that, but I like using these channel strips because they give you all the tools you need all in one place. So uh, around this video somewhere, there's gonna be a link to download the Universal Channel Strip for free from Mixa Texture. That means you get a <clears throat> Ableton rack that works for, I think, Live 9, 10, and 11. And then you can drop it on all the channels in your mix and work with whatever you need for utility, high pass filters, compression, EQ, limiter, and even a gate to shape the sounds. And these are audio engineering tools that I use at every on every channel in the mix. I mean, pretty much every channel is gonna need EQ and compression at some point. 
And when you have a channel strip like this, it gives you a workflow that allows you to do your gain staging, tone shaping, and dynamics control all in one place easily without having to stop and think about it or find the tools or get out. Of, I mean, you can just keep listening to the music and staying in the flow. So there we are at the end state of this mix, super quick mix. Again, the beginning before was just like this. And we went to here in like two minutes. And when you're doing pro audio engineering, you need to be able to quickly identify problems, make decisions, solve the problems, get to a better sound and export something done. And remember, I'm not trying to make this the most amazing track in the world. I just want it to sound as good as possible with what they sent me so I can give it back and have them take it from there. A lot of audio engineering is like that, where you're um, delivering the artist the best version of what they make and not trying to solve their entire problems for them. So if you're into technical audio engineering and doing some cleanup and making mixes quickly that you feel good about, grab this Universal Channel Strip, play with it, and uh, let me know how you like it. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.